we raised about 250 head of market goats, but they're called boar goats. They're meat goats. They originated from South Africa over here into the U.S. People started breeding and they do a lot of full blood stuff is they'll have horns and red heads and they'll show them as full bloods. They'll be bigger bodied. Um, people, a couple, like maybe 10 or so years ago, they started inbreeding them with like mitonic goats, which were fainting goats. Have you seen those where they run and they faint? So they'll start breeding that into the genetics further down the line and it makes them more muscular and bigger chest and that kind of stuff. So people started showing goats like at 4-H and FFA and sheep and stuff. So they started bringing the goats about 10, 10 years ago and they're getting super popular. People raising them like all around the US, Texas. Um, I know some people, they have about 950 head of goats they run. It's insane. Um, so we have about 250 head here. We kid year round, so we have babies all the time. Um, the moms, their gestation cycle, they're only pregnant for five months. So we'll breed them and then they kid out five months later. And then we'll rate, they'll stay here for probably four months or so, and then we'll wean them off and then we'll sell them for shows or we'll keep them. Um, so they're only with the mom in these jugs for about a couple months and then we'll kick them outside. Um, so they're pretty cute, but. So these ones are a couple days old. So we had this last week and we probably about had 30 head of mom's kid. So this is kind of our busy time and we'll breed again in April. So we'll kid out in September or so and we'll sell them for fall shows and stuff. Um, I don't know if you guys know much about goats, but they're ruminants. They have four stomachs. So they like break down. It's They have the abomasum, the mason, the reticulum, and the rumen. So I don't know all the different processes off the top of my head, but they all go through and they have different jobs. They break down alfalfa and go through here and get sucked into the body with nutrients. And then whatever doesn't stick, it obviously comes out when they go to the bathroom. Um, yeah, so that's the same thing like cattle, sheep, deer, they're all ruminants. Um, so they have the four stomachs and like pigs and stuff, they are, I think they're different. They don't have four stomachs. They're just normal like people. But, but yeah, yeah. Um, go ahead. She froze. So some of them like see this one, she has horns. We bought her that way. Some people leave horns on them. Um, I'll show you some pictures in a minute, but usually we'll dehorn or disbud the goats at probably like a week old or so. So we use an iron. Sheep don't have to do it, but we do because we can't show them with horns for weathers like the males. So males are weathered. They're called weathered. They're castrated males. Um, so we use an iron. It's like a hot iron and we burn the top of the horn. It's like a golden color. Here, I'll pull up the screen. Um, right here. Right. Okay, can you guys see me or no? So these is these people, they have a lot of goats. I just use their. <clears throat> yeah, so for the disc budding, this is the iron. It's just it gets super hot right here, and you only hold it on for like a couple seconds on the goats and it burns. Let's see. Shave it. So you can see right here. I don't know if you see my screen down. You can see there's like little bumps right there. There's dents. That's where the horns start to grow. So you got to do it sooner than later because it's harder or they'll grow back and you'll get little buds. So they shaved it. So that's after the first burn. So you see the little ones, they'll put it around it. So it kills all the growth around this. So you only have to do it once and then they'll just fall right off. It's just part of the process you have to do. See that horn, it already fell off. Um, and they have thick skin. So yeah, they cry, but it's not super painful. It's just... Part of it. See, they're fine. And then a couple weeks later, they're dried, scabby, and then they grow normal. Cause we have a lot of them. Like, well, I can see. It's like this one right here. And, oh, that's my screen. Right there. Yeah. So it's this one right here, you can see she was a show goat. She doesn't have horns. So we just disbud them. And sometimes we have a lot that have horns. Like this one has horns. A lot of them for show goats, you want them to have horns. Just they look prettier and 
they tear up stuff. So they'll hit fences and, but it's like pros and cons. You can use them as a little handle to grab onto or, um, yeah, so we just got them about 12 days and we'll give them all their vaccinations and all their deworming they need and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so they'll stay in these jugs for probably two months or so, as long as we have room. And then we'll kick them outside where they can go into little creek feeds where the mom can't eat the grain, but the babies can go in and eat. So it helps them grow um, and maintain their little, their baby fat. And then when it gets around like four, four months old or so, we will wean them. We'll do like a three day wean. We'll like keep them in a pen with their moms separated for the day. And then the second night they'll stay the night by themselves. And then the third day we'll just wean them so it's not as hard as on them. And then we just start pushing them on feed and we'll do, we do online sales for the show goats. We'll get them all clipped up pretty and we'll online sell them or we'll go to private, private sales around the, around the uh, California and sell them that way. Um, yeah, they're, they're fun. They're like little dogs. These hang out. They all scared, but you guys have any questions on that part? I know Gia's got questions. Yeah, I got a question, but you already ended the first two, so. Oh, I did? Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> What obstacles do you run into when you work with some of the goats? Like, you're breaking up. I can't hear you. Say it again. I heard obstacles and then you stopped. You there? There you go. Yeah, hold on. It's just my, my internet. Really Very good. So uh, what did you say? Yeah, I heard you say about obstacles. You said obstacles we go through with the goats. Mm -hmm. Um, Probably just daily taking care of them is when they kid. If Well, sometimes we have issues when they kid. They don't. Oh, that's what I was going to show you. Yeah, so when they kid, they all they have to come a certain direction or we have issues and we have to have a vet come out and all this kind of stuff I'll share it with you right now. So usually when you want them to come out with every animal, you want them to come feet first, front feet first, and then the head. I'll show you. So sometimes you'll get one arm and they get their other arm gets stuck on the pelvis. You have to like help go in there and help a kid. Um, okay, let's try it again. Okay, can you see this? Okay, so this is the uterus. So when they come out, they should look like that. The front feet and the head, they should come out that way. So some people, this is normal. They'll come that way. Some will come. It's normal too. They'll come back feet first. So you just got to figure out when you go to help the system, if they need help, if it's the front feet or the back feet. Um, they'll have up to twins. They can have singles. They can have triplets. They can have quad, quad, quads. And we had one last year, she had five and they all live. So they all just come out their different ways. But usually you want them to keep coming in this uniform. You want them to come feet and head first. And sometimes you'll get breech first is when you go in there and nothing's happening and you feel a little tail. So you have to go in there and help and you'll pull these back legs out. And like today I had one that had this today, their shoulders getting stuck on the pelvis. Sometimes they're small enough where you can just help pull on this front leg and the other leg will come right out. And then this time, this usually is issues with mineral deficiencies. The head will come out weak and it's not straight. It'll come floppy neck or floppy kid syndrome. Um, so this is hard because the head gets stuck and it won't come out sideways. So you have to go in there and adjust it to get it come out right. Um, and then you could get some that come two at a time. It just depends. Um, so that's a daily life to life thing. It's just when we kid, we just hope that they come out correctly and we don't have to have a lot of issues, but it happens in all livestock. You lose some, but majority, I try to keep them all alive. Um, so yeah, but yeah, they can have up to singles all the way to five as I've heard of. We've had five, which is crazy. I was like, oh my gosh, she still has more. Um, and then just, if you have to move them around, like I got a dog this year, Border Collie, so he helps me move them around and stuff, but they're stubborn. If they don't want to go a certain way, they won't go. They'll just run the complete opposite way. So I have him help me kind of gather them up. And if I don't have someone else to help me, but it's just 
just the maintenance work, but feeding's pretty easy. They're, they, they'll eat anything like goats. People say goats will eat anything. So they clean up their hay, the grain. And I had one, I was, I give them some cheese its and they're fun though, but they'll eat anything. Um, so yeah, that answer your questions. Do you have any more? Um, no, I don't got questions. You like, you just huh? you answer them, and then you like go into more full depth, and oh, then ask sorry. the other questions. I already answered them. Yeah. Okay, I try to go into detail. Um, I have videos of birthing. I don't know if you guys would get grossed out, but I have them if you guys want to see them. I took them this last fall. So if you guys want to see them. No, that, 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 yes. that's not worse because my freshman year, our biology teacher showed us mating videos. Oh, of really? Like, of like, um, yeah, I'll show you the bucks later. The male goat. You saw mating videos of what? Horses and pigs. Oh man, like yeah. What they'll, what, what they'll do to help them? I don't know. It was, it was weird. Yeah, I'll <laughs> show. I'll show you our male goats. They're really stinky and they're big and they're gross. They, their way of scent for the ladies is they like to pee on themselves. They'll pee on their front legs and they somehow they like the smell of it. So it's really disgusting. They stink, but they're just big boys. But okay, I'm gonna show you the videos of the birthing and then we'll get back to it. Let's see. It's not that bad. I like it. Let's see if I can make it work. This is for later. Okay, so here's one. Usually they have first, I don't know how to make it bigger. Let's see. They have a first bubble that comes out, it's just a water bubble. We'll have that. I don't know if you can see it with all the veins on it. I think it's pretty cool. Let me see my best friend. So you can see right there. I don't know how to zoom in. How do I zoom in? I don't know. Can you guys see it all right? So that's the first one. You can kind of see a leg or something right there. So the next one is the head. So this one came out correctly. See the feet and the legs and the tongue? She's already past the hard part. The head's the hardest part. But you can see all the veins and the sac. I think it's crazy, but they pop right out. As soon as they get past that head and the front feet, it's easy. Let me see this one. So this is after. I think it's super cool how all the, the veins, see all that? All the, on the sack, that's just what they're holding them in. And they can't really burst because it's a super thin or super thick sack that they come in. So you can see it right there. And then this one, I think this one came out. So she had one and she popped the second one out. See, that one's coming correctly. I don't know if you can see the head and the two feet. So that's how they correct correctly you should come out and then you just gotta help them sometimes the sack won't pop just hang them upside down get all the meat out you got yourself a buck and then they'll stand right up usually <laughs> so so that's not too bad is it do you touch it with your bare hands? Yes, I do. Sometimes I don't have time to grab gloves. I just, you got to do it. <laughs> How does it feel? Yeah. Uh, not really. It's just slime. Like the sack and stuff slimy, but it's just the feed and stuff. It's fun. When we can come out live, you guys will have to come out and experience it. It's fun. Another thing I was going to mention, so... There's different ways that people, they breed the goats. So we can do live breeding is like natural mating as we have the males on property and we'll just breed them when they come into cycles, when they come into heat, when they're ready to breed. Um, other people will do AI, which is artificial insemination, which they will go inside laparoscopically on the belly of the goats. I'll show you a picture of the uterus. And they'll have either frozen semen you can buy from people or you can get uh, collected semen from your own bucks. So it kind of benefits it because say a, a buck can only cover like maybe five or five or so does a day. 
So what it benefits is you'll collect the buck and you, you can breed them to 30, 40 plus head. So you can, they all take that same day. So five months later, they're all kid during that week. So it's just more benefit for people that are in the show world that need more goats at the same time. And it's less hard on the bucks. It's doesn't, they just, they wear themselves out a lot and they're really hard on themselves. But, um, and then another way we just did it this year is you'll flush them. So like it's embryo transfer, which is what they, they do it with people. You'll, get the embryos of the female like you have a super nice goat that you like her babies you'll you'll breed her to a live your buck you'll give her shots or for eight to ten days you'll give her a flatropian shot it's like a super ovulate so it makes her drop a ton of eggs that she all that she has and then you'll go in a week later and you'll go in and flush here i'll show you right now you'll flush out all the eggs of the uterus and you put them into recips like surrogate moms and they will raise them so the mom that you're taking the eggs from doesn't really raise the babies. You just put them in surrogate moms so that they raise them. It just kind of helps you generate your herd quicker five months later. So you can have all these nice babies rather than one baby, one mom's having the same babies. Um, so what are the complications with that? Um, that's kind of with everything, just the surgery or infection after, but usually with the vets and stuff, they usually have really good precautions and we'll give them antibiotics and stuff like that after. Um, so this guy, this is a vet right here that we just use. So if you can listen, he's talking through the whole procedure. Um, if you can hear it right here. So that's a uterus on top. Into that and they'll catch into the ditch. Now, they can't be seen with the naked eye. They're only six and a half days old. So they should be 124 sales or more. And if it was a different species, they are flushed maybe a day before or a day after. So cattle are a day after this. Um, flushed a little differently. Deer are going to be flushed the exact same way as these are, uh, but they're flushed on seven days. Horses are flushed with, uh, like cattle, but you can see their embryos with the naked eye. So, but they're flushed on day seven to nine. Uh, goats are typically six to seven, cattle are seven, uh, deer are seven. So, so it just kind of depends. How many goats does the horse have that day? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, the horse embryos are, uh, since they're day nine, they're not, no longer the embryos, they're actually... So I don't know if you can see right there, so the goat uterus, they have horn-like uterus, so there's a, a tube on the left side and the tube on the right side. Um, they're all under sedation under here, so they can't feel anything, and he'll stitch it back up and they'll be good as, good as new. But they go in there, they'll put that thing in there, and they'll flush out all the eggs, and the guy that was over here a second ago holding the little dish right here, he pushes sterile water throughout the whole the horns of the uterus and then the embryos you can't even see them it's just like water they'll go into that dish and he'll go into another room and give it to the embryologist and he'll look under a microscope and see with the naked eye of the embryos what they look like uh, what we call like a they're kind of they're compacted they're a little different but they're they around for uh, See the little dish right there, the guy's holding Remember, all the embryos going to that. Those will be sitting over here. Yeah, we'll, for yeah, we'll look at them under the microscope and we grade them. So there's a, a stage, which is how old they are, and a grading system, which is good, okay, poor, and dead. Uh, and we grade them, then each embryo is looked at and rolled around so you get a 3D picture of it. And you can tell whether it's going to be a good one or not. And then you can see, I tell it how old it is. Yeah. 
Goes back in there. Um, here, I'll show you another video. This is a better picture of it. I don't know if you guys get grossed out, but let's see it. So those are both the uterine horns is pushing the sterile water through. You can see a little drip down in this little petri. That's where all the embryos get flushed in. They do this on sheep, they do it on goats. Cattle, they do it differently. They go vaginally because they don't, they have more room to work with the goats you can't. Um, so they do a little incision right there and they'll do that. Um, so yeah. So here's a picture, I don't know if you guys can see it. This is, these are what the embryos look like under the microscope. So you can see yeah, there's little shadows and stuff. So these are already fertile when he flushes them out. So he grades them and all this kind of stuff, which I have no idea how they do it, but they just look at color. I think they look at velocity of the circle, if it's dented or I, I don't know, more to it. But this is what they show us under the microscope and then they'll grade them and then you'll pick and you'll put them into your certain recips that you want to put them in and then they raise them up and hopefully that you have to have the recips to be in the same stage as they were for their body to take the embryos and to hold on to them in their uterus so they'll go back in and they'll pull out the part of the uterus um of the recip and they'll just poke the little eggs in there and then they'll be done it's a quick little surgery and it just helps you generate your herd over a period of time just get better genetics rather than doing it you mean one year you breed them and one you can put all those embryos into 15, 20 recips. You can have all the same kind of babies and see how they do. So we have a group here. They're due February 25th. So we'll get to see how those look. So we're excited, but you guys have any questions on that? I can try to answer. Is that crazy? Do you guys know that they did that on the goats and sheep? So that's a whole other side of the animal science, which I love that kind of stuff. It's just all the reproductive, that kind of stuff. Um, a lot of people that I work with, they fly all over the States and they do it for goats, sheep, and they go all over. Um, but yeah, so most of these though, they were, these are all live breads. We put the buck with our does and we put a little marker on their chest and he'll show us which ones he was breeding this day. Yeah. You guys have any more questions? I'll try to go outside, see if my Wi Fi goes out. Go for it, Gio. I know you have a question. Uh, <laughs> I don't have a question. <laughs> Is that like my, a shock to you? Yeah, my innocent eyes are crying right now. <laughs> So these, these are all the same age. These are a bunch of doe-lings that we have. So these hang out on here, eat the grain. So these are new babies. They were, their time was up inside the jugs inside. So they're out here playing now. So we'll keep my hair. That's a creep feeder right there that we'll put grain and stuff in. So the moms, cause they're kind of fat. They don't need to eat the grain. They won't give them the chance to eat the grain. So we put it in there so the babies can go in there whenever they want. Um, but yeah, so they're quite noisy. My brother wants to know, are goats stinky? So we'll go like yearlings and we'll go. Can you guys still hear me? Is my Wi-Fi cutting out? Okay. Here's a buck. He's sleepy. But they're stinky. They go. Yeah, so they're gross and nasty. You see the difference. Those are all pretty and he's all grody. So and stuff, that's their, they, they pee on themselves for the ladies. It's their perfume, their cologne. So they, they can get up to like 200 to 300 pounds. So we always dehorn them because they can be very aggressive in a way or they can just push you around really easy. So we always take the horns off of them because they could do some damage, but the does aren't as, as wild as they are. Um, 
And they usually can live up to probably seven to ten years, depending uh, on health and stuff. Um, yeah, we have a whole pasture out there. I don't know if you can see that far. I don't know if my Wi-Fi will go that far. It's all out there. So we have like two acres. We two fields. We split and we put certain goats on one side, certain does on the other side. Um, yeah. Those are the goats. You have any other questions? I'm trying to think what else. Do you collect the milk or do you just give, leave them to the mamas? What was that? Do you collect the milk or do you just leave them for the mamas? We leave it for the mamas. These aren't really, some we have that are like really good milkers and stuff, um, but we don't use the milk for anything. They have dairy goats that do that. They have the really big udders and stuff. So we just let the moms feed the babies and stuff, um, the milk. But I've never, yeah, I've never tried their milk. I don't really want to. <laughs> I've tried goat's milk though. When we went that one time, it was really good. But um, I tried goat cheese. It tastes like cream cheese. That's it. I've never tried it. I probably need to. Is it pretty good though? Creamy. Yeah, it tastes like like less of a cheesy flavor than cream cheese, but it has the same texture. Oh, really? Does it have a good taste to it? Like creamy? Yeah. Not bad. Yeah, so a lot of people, they do like the goat cheese, goat milk, and goat soap. That's with the dairy goats, like the Nubian goats. These ones are mainly for meat. Um, so a lot of people, they'll, there's like a big, I'm trying to think of where, but there, a lot of people in other countries, they really like the goat meat. It's really high in protein and stuff. Um, I've tried it once. It tastes like deep pit, deep pit beef to me. It wasn't too bad, but yeah, so... They are meat goats. How much do you sell a goat for? Well, it depends. So on the show side, since we sell them for show, it's super popular. A lot of people, for us, we're still small down here. So our highest could be like $3,000 as they'll sell them as castrated and they'll show them all over the country. Um, but like the big time breeders, they go for, I've seen some for like $20,000. I'm like, oh my goodness. So yeah, they go for a lot. It, the goat industry is getting crazy out here, so that would be a goal, but got to work your way up, so, but yeah, and then some people for me, like, you can sell for, like, 400 bucks, or at the auction, I think they go for, like, 200 to 400, depending on their size, um, but it just depends. So, if I were to buy a meat goat off of you, how much would you sell it for? Depending <sighs> on the size, but I think you figured it out, probably, like, 150, 200 bucks. Tell grandma we're having media next. <laughs> but yeah, some tacos. Uh, yeah, no. Um, she doesn't like the chicken here. I think goat season for eating goat. Yeah, because usually we eat like goat for like Christmas and stuff. Like, oh yeah, we're festivities. Down for that. The only thing we can eat goat for right now is probably for um, like birthdays. El Dia de los Reyes? No, and they passed already. No, that's in February. I thought it was in January. Have you guys tried goat before or no? Any of you? Do you guys? I tried it once in a taco. Was it good? How about you, Ezekiel? Have you tried it? You tried what? Have you tried goat meat before? Yeah. You like it? Yeah. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Does it taste like beef, kind of, or no? I thought it tastes like deep pit beef. But I think so. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's a daily day. They just kid out all the time. Just we have another group in February, and then we kind of just kid year round. So, we always have stuff for shows or livestock shows or. And then we have cattle too. That's a whole nother thing down there. <laughs> but okay, you guys have any more questions or concerns or what I do or what we have? Geo, do you have any more you're gonna throw at me? Huh? What is your job on the farm? What's my job? 
pretty much just management of all the goats. We have a guy that helps us and he feed, feeds and stuff, but I have to be able to see if anything's sick or they're standing in the corner with their tail down. You just have to kind of know and what to treat them with. And um, I try to help market the goats and sell them to kids and 4-H kids and FFA. Um, and then I'll, I have all my regimens down for worming. So we have to deworm everything to make sure they don't have, you know what I mean, worms or so I stay up on it. We do it every month. Um, so that's a whole nother thing. We use different kinds of wormers. So they don't get resistant to it and pick up the worms. And then we do pour on on their back for mites and that kind of stuff. Um, we had its overall management and just trying to keep them going and have babies. Yes, soon you guys will have to come out here when we do it. I'm hoping we can get people to come out and AI and flush again. You guys will have to come watch in person. It's really cool. And you can ask the guy questions and yes, you guys can come out. I know Lexi will like that. But Okay. Any more? Do you guys want me to show you any more stuff? Um. An anonymous person wants to know, can get can goats get depressed like horses? Can they get what? Depressed? Depressed? Oh, yes. Goats are companion animals. If you have one in a pen, like where there's nobody else around, they freak out, they scream. They always have to be partner goats. They're companion animals. That's like horses. A lot of people, they'll come by like little pet goats or something. They'll put them with their horses just to be pets of their for their horses and stuff um yeah they don't do well by themselves they freak out that's like when the people i don't know if you guys ever showed goats before when you get them tame and stuff they're like little puppy dogs they'll hop in your lap and eat anything from you and they'll follow you around they have really good personalities but they're very smart animals anything else do you think a goat would make a good pet? Yes, I do. Backyard. They trim up your trees and everything for you. They love trees. Sheep, they're like browsers. They'll eat on the ground first, but goats, they'll go straight to a tree and then they'll work their way down. They like to eat bushes and trees and rose bushes and they eat all kinds of stuff. They're grazers. Anything else? Good. Okay. Lexi has a question. Lexi has a question. Go for it. I don't have a question. Zeke, have a question? <laughs> no. Okay. Do you guys like the goats? They're cute, pretty cute person. They're little. Like this one, she had triplets. The heat lamp. But yeah, they can all comes in colors. I don't know if you see that one. It's solid red with black. She's like, what's going on? Yes, yeah, so we get some that are black. Like this one, I don't know if you can see it. She's black headed. So we get some, like we have a buck that's black headed. So he throws a black headed goats. He's pretty cute. So he's black headed. But yeah. So we get some of their blackhead, we'll get paints, we'll get solid red, we'll get some with red and black, we'll get painted up and there's all kinds of colors. But these ones, these are the traditional colors, just the white and the red. Um, and then we tag them, I don't know if you can see, like her number is, her number, tag number is three. So when we tag the babies, I put, if they have twins, I put three A and then three B. So I know, so if they're running around, I know that they have a brother and sister and if they have a single, I just put the letter three, like the same as the moms. So I know that they pair up together. Um, and then later on, when we go to sell them for shows and stuff, we have to put a scrapey tag in their ear. So it's like our herd tag. So if anything ever happens to it or whatever, they can trace it back to us. Um, everybody has to do that. That's just our way of doing it. Um, and we always put the males, they have left tags and the girls have the right tags. It's just kind of easier for us to keep track and see when we go out in the pasture. 
but but yeah okay you guys good i'm trying to think of anything else but i could go on and on about it uh questions no but i was talking to harvey right now and he said that he didn't get the email for the for the farm yeah i sent it to him let's see i'll look if not i can share it to him since we just looked at it right i'm, re I'm recording it who's killer shark the a I don't know. I think it's someone else. Okay, I'm gonna stop it. Okay, I'm not recording anymore. But no, I sent it to everybody. I had someone, gee, I think I had your old email and I had 